Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here with another kitchen conundrum. Well, not technically a kitchen conundrum, but it is something that everybody's looking forward to this time of year, and that is game day treats. And today I'm gonna show you one of the things that's really close to me, and that is buffalo chicken wings, because I am from Buffalo. So I'm gonna show you that buffalo chicken wings are really easy to make at home, and you don't need to spend the money going out and buying them for the game day. To start, I have a large Dutch oven here filled with about four inches of neutral oil. So that is like a safflower oil, a canola oil, any vegetable oil, something that can go up to a high, high heat. And to this pot, I'm going to add a wire rack. Now this is one of my favorite tricks here whenever I'm deep frying. Putting a rack in the bottom of the pot, what that does is it helps to fry things nice and evenly. Just use some tongs to help yourself out there. So what that wire rack does is it helps to lift the food off the bottom of the pan so you get really nicely evenly cooked food without any brown or burnt spots from hitting the bottom. I'm gonna use a deep fat thermometer here. This is a candy thermometer and I need to heat the oil up to about 400 degrees. And now while this oil comes up to heat, I'm gonna show you how to cut the wings into the appropriate size pieces. This is what you're gonna get at your supermarket. This is a chicken wing here, and I'm going to separate it into three parts. The first part here is the drumette, and all you have to do is look for the joint of the chicken wing, cut through the skin, bend it a little bit, and it should pop out. The joint should pop out right there, and now you know where to cut. So this is the drumette, and so this portion, believe it or not, is called the wingette. You wanna do the same thing here, where you, you take the wing tip, which is this portion, you break the joint, and then you should be able to cut cleanly through. We're not gonna fry up this wing tip here. Place this in a resealable plastic bag in your freezer, and you'll have this for whenever you need to make chicken stock. And here you go, your wingette. So our oil is almost up to temperature. And now for the wings, take a piece of paper towel here and gently dab off any excess moisture because if you have excess moisture on your chicken wings, once you place them in the hot oil, they're really gonna spatter up. So dry them off really well. You don't want your wings to be too cold either. So don't take these right out of the refrigerator and plunge them into the oil. Otherwise it will lower the temperature of the oil dramatically and your wings will take that much longer to cook. So the chicken wings are nice and dry. Now you wanna work in batches. You don't wanna throw all of the wings in at once because it will lower the temperature of the oil and the grease will absorb into the chicken wings and that's not something you want. So gently place the wings into the pot and that rack is really great because the wings do sink down to the bottom. They're not gonna rest on the bottom of the pot. They're gonna be elevated up. And I'm using about four pounds of chicken wings total. Try to fry your drumettes in one batch and your wingettes in another batch. Don't mix them up too much because they do have slightly different cooking times. But in general, the wings will cook about 15 to 20 minutes in total. So I'm on my last batch of wings here and you wanna make sure that when you pull the wings out of the oil, you transfer them onto a wire rack. Don't put them onto paper towel because what that does is that direct contact with the paper towel, it creates steam and one side of your wing will get soggy. So use a wire rack to drain them off and to cool them slightly. Now, while I'm working on my last batch here, I'm gonna start the sauce. And the sauce is the most important thing for your wings. All it really is is two ingredients. So I have Frank's red sauce here. That is the real secret ingredient. So I have one cup. I'm gonna place it into the bottom of a small saucepan here. And I'm gonna bring this up to heat, just to a bare simmer. It's just up to a bare simmer. You can see some bubbles forming. And now I'm going to add the butter. So I have one cup of hot sauce and I'm going to add four tablespoons of cold unsalted butter and gradually add it in, whisking until it combines. But if you wanted a more mild wing, all you have to do is increase the butter a little bit. So doing a two to one ratio hot sauce to butter will give you a mild wing. This is about a four to one ratio. The butter is nicely incorporated into the hot sauce. I'm gonna turn the heat off and let this cool down slightly before dressing the wings. This batch is finally done. It's been about 20 minutes. Right onto the wire rack to drain. So now the chicken wings are gonna go right into a bowl here. Use a bowl that's wide enough that you can actually toss the wings. I'm gonna do about half of the batch here. I'll add about half of the sauce around the side of the bowl. Just swirl the wings around. If you're feeling a little daring here, you can gently toss the wings up to coat them evenly. 
So our buffalo wings wouldn't be complete without a little bit of blue cheese dip, and that basically is some mayo, a little bit of sour cream, some blue cheese, of course, a little bit of lemon and salt and pepper. It's the perfect accompaniment to these spicy wings because it helps to cool them off a little bit. So there you have it, buffalo chicken wings, my recipe to you. So if you have any kitchen conundrums that you need solved, write in the comment section below or reach out to me using the hashtag kitchen conundrums and I will solve whatever kitchen problems you may have. Enjoy.